Hi, I'm Mark Dice, and welcome back to Let's Play Ragnarok. Uh, yeah, I said I was gonna go warp to somewhere, but a whole bunch of stuff happened, and hopefully I didn't skip the video. I saw the video was there, and should be all good. Um, I realize that the text is hard to read, um, like my money and all that stuff. Um, for some reason, because I'm playing this in a very large size, um, it looks that way, and there's a little bit of, like, recording lapse, um, but some of that is from minor lag that I'm getting just because I'm playing online, and the other reason is, is that because I'm playing in such a large size, uh, the recorder's having a little bit of trouble recording everything precisely, so don't think that this is actually what the game 100% looks like. Let's go ahead and I need to drop off some stuff. I guess awesome snake card. That is pretty awesome that I've gotten two good things. Um, so I bought 2,000 bullets. Hopefully that'll last me a little bit longer. Um, I switched out of using the six shooter um, because I bought the branch. I wanted to try that out, see how well it works, if it works well at all. Um, but we've still got a couple levels until I can use the crimson bolt or another weapon I have. But, let's just drop stuff off. Uh, let's put a... No, actually, I'll keep the strawberries on me. Because we will be needing those soon. Alright. Now, Alberta, you've lost your... You know, flair for me right now. So, let's go to Payon. See right here. Strawberries. Now, the difference in these shops is, is that this, when you see a little coin stack, that means somebody's buying an item. Like, they want to buy an item to you, so you sell them an item. So, here's 10 strawberries. I don't care that they're only 2,000, but I get 20,000 zenny for 10 strawberries that I got while grinding. That is not a bad deal. So, let's sell them. Um, there are other things, like dead branches that people buy a lot. And I think you can look around and see, look that's a better price than this one's price. This one's 2350 the other one is 24000 Usually if you shop around in places like Payon or Pontera, you can find people buying stuff for all sorts of different prices. Now this person, they're selling strawberries for 3000 And they're selling blue herbs. Not very helpful. But you'll usually find people around They'll have all sorts of things. You probably can't read it. Eggs, weapons, arrows. How exciting. Not very useful. But <clears throat> it always helps, especially early on. Like, look, cheap, cheap equipment. You'd buy an adventurer suit, buy a bow, buy a club. And I have some cards. The stupid cap that everyone wears. Some books. Apple Archer, which actually would be helpful for me, but I only have 21,000 zenny. Who knows? The way this is going, I'll probably get one with a card. Alright, so we're level 13. Ignore these people. Whenever you see these people that are offering to buy zenny, don't buy zenny. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. Half of the time it's a scam and they'll just take your credit card number and freaking screw you on that. Um, and also, if the game finds out, you'll probably get your account banned. So, yeah, not a good idea. And that's the other one. That's, uh, if someone has a door, that means that they've opened up a chat box to talk about something. And this one, uh, has a little lock on it that you can't really see. So, let's see if I can move over and see. Um, I don't know if you can read the text, but they have a little chat box and there's a little lock on it because the chat is locked, so that way only certain people have the password. Um, the little blue glow around her means she's transcended, she's gone to level 100, transcended back down to level 1, then gone all the way up, uh, back to 250. So, yeah, they've done a lot. And these people, sitting here talking. They have no idea that I'm recording them. 
Never walk near that guy, he's a jerk. He starts you with a conversation about blocking his son. Kind of a jerk. But, I want to get one more level, or actually two more levels. And then, I can show you the best step to go from here. To kind of maximize your time spent. See, you cannot get the item. The red text means that somebody just killed something there. So technically, those items are still theirs. Also, at the bottom, you'll see a prompt. I don't like messing with the messages. But if you press enter, you can type in your text, like, Hey, how's it going? Uh, there's also Alt-L brings up all the emotions you can do, like just random ones. Um, like if you double click them, it'll randomly do the emotion. And at the bottom, it'll tell you like backslash sob, backslash question mark, question mark, backslash PIF. Um, those are all little emotions that people will do from time to time. Um, instead of typing out, whoa, that was so cool, you can just do that. It's a lot easier. A lot slower, but a lot more powerful. Das Vidanya, spoiler comrade. That's how I look with this little bunny on my head. Looks like one of those Shafka or whatever they're called. The Russian hats. I don't think it's a Shafka. Maybe it's called something else. I have no idea. You stab it, little ninja. Alright. Do do. No music here. Yeah. Actually, I'm just gonna go down a map. This map actually doesn't have. It has. Like, this map is usually fairly laggy because you have stupid people like that. That is just walked by. That was most likely a bot. Um, people send, you know, make automated programs and scripts that will play Ragnarok and have a character run around and uh, farm items for them. Uh, yeah, it's really lame and it just wastes server space and server time. Uh, botting is also one of those things that can get the count banned, so don't do it. But, I don't know, you'll find some maps will have people that are unresponsive if you talk. Like, uh, not everybody in this game is so willing to talk. Uh, there's a lot of foreign language and uh, people that are just antisocial. I'm not messing with no Bigfoot. They'll probably own me, but let's try killing a Bigfoot. I did it. Took way too many potions to do it. But I'm just using this map to cut through. Because going around the other way takes way too long. In my opinion. Some people don't mind walking through a map, but... Eh. I prefer to take this way. You know, I could probably kill a Creamy now. Yeah, things are slowing up. I think it's because my neighbors are using their internet. Sometimes, uh, our jerk neighbors decide that they want to use our internet even though it's like community internet. How inconsiderate of them. I'm trying to play a game while they're probably trying to check their work email. Unacceptable. Actually, since I got a job level, I might as well do that real quick. I have a lot of job points that I should have been putting into stuff. Alright. I have a chance of firing two shots with a single attack, so let's go ahead and. Oh, I could do tracking, but I think I have to cast that. Yeah, that's offensive. I want to get. Uh, for me, I like getting passive skills up first, 
because you don't get a lot of SP, you don't get a lot of certain things, so it makes it very hard um, in the beginning if you don't get like a certain number of passive skills that might, you know, help you or make grinding a little bit easier, and not grinding easier only when you're attacking, if you get what I mean. Oh, it only puts me on this map? I thought it put me a map lower. Oh, well. I don't know. I haven't been around Pioneer in a long time. Vengeance is mine, Willows. Hurt me in the training ground. Now I've got revenge. Do do you. Makes me wonder if anybody picked Frank Castle as a name for a gunslinger yet. But, yeah. So, let's walk to the map where I can actually effectively grind. Because up here, most of those monsters are lower level. And again, looking at the map always is a good indicator of where you should be um, to grind on monsters. It's not always the best. Some monsters may have less experience. Uh, for you to get but they're easier for you to defeat, so it makes sense to take care of the monster you can defeat easier. I don't know if you can hear me over the gunshots, but... Is somebody selling stuff out here? I'll oh, be right back. I thought it'd be kind of awesome if someone was selling potions out here. Um, you can set up like a buy-sell shop anywhere, it's just not advised to do it somewhere where monsters are aggro. Um, and if you don't know what aggro means, it means aggressive. It means that whether you attack them or not... I'm just going to fly wing. Screw this place. Um, whether you attack or not, they come after you. Usually it's good, especially with MMOs. If you're going to play them, always make sure to go ahead and grab somebody else. Um who you think would want to play. Because even if it's like a bad MMO, I'm not saying that Ragnarok is bad, I actually like it quite a, quite a bit, but uh, it's always good to just have another friend to play with, because even if the game is like hard, in quotes, or not that great, it's still more enjoyable just because you're doing it with someone else. I mean, if you're antisocial and you just want to play a game like an RPG game without having to pay for it, go ahead and play Ragnarok. Easy enough. I've also meant to uh, play one of their other games, Rec Room, but whenever I actually get around to installing it, I get lazy. So, I haven't gotten on that yet. Also, Ragnarok has been eating up so much of my time. I have Ragnarok and Skyrim, and uh, for those of you who are X3 fans, um, X3 Albion Prelude came out in December, which I totally wanted to get, but couldn't. Because I'm poor. Random animals. Oh, that was nice. But, uh, mostly ranged classes, other than mages, uh, you usually have to buy, like, arrows or bullets and equip them. It's kind of a downfall to having range attack, but it's better than games where you don't have to buy them. I've played a couple games where it's like, archers get the advantage of a ranged attack and a powerful, you know, character class without any monetary downfall or difficulty acquiring items they need. I mean, I'm probably going to take uh, some money and pretty much like, fill my character's inventory, uh, my storage, that is, with bullets, just so that way I don't have to worry about running out. I know somewhere you can buy, like, I think boxes of bullets. I'm not 100% sure. I don't know everything about the gunslinger yet. Um... I shouldn't say yet, because I probably never will know 100% about everything about the gunslinger. 
But yeah, quiet grinding in the beginning. I'm normally used to uh, having delirious or someone else here, which makes this whole grinding process a little easier. Just because, you know, you have someone else out there getting experience, and although you lose a percentage um, of your total experience gained, you still, uh, you're getting it twice as fast. So even if you're only getting 75% of your experience, or I think it's like 60%, uh, you're still gaining constant experience. And if you ever have like a dry spell where there are no monsters around you, uh, it's always good because the other person might have found like a whole cache of monsters hidden somewhere. I don't know. It's a lot better when you can at least chat back and forth. Because you do have, uh, since I'm just killing regular boring monsters, uh, these tiny little buttons, they have send to all, send to party, send to guild, so that way you don't look like a crazy person, you know, talking to yourself out in the field. Um, when you type a message, no one else will see it but your friends. The only downfall to this is, is that you can actually create a a separate thing that's just for that in case you don't want to listen to like how much damage you did to a monster or what items you got. You can actually go through these buttons and there's an option to turn off certain notifications. I also think it's in your regular options. Uh, so that way you can only see like talk messages if you don't care to read what's going on screen. I always like to look at it for damage modifiers and stuff. Expect you to die. All right. I don't think I actually saved in Payon, so I might have to go back to Alberta. Oops, I do that all the time. I always forget to save in places. All right. Yeah, that ding ding sound is very obnoxious. Uh, it's People who are requesting a party in an area, um, I never use it. I don't find it very useful or helpful. Usually I just find a place where I'm grinding and, you know, if I'm a healer, I'll heal somebody and then just be like, oh, sweet, you want a party? Let's party together then. And then, you know, things go from there. And of course I didn't bother to save, so let's just talk to her. Of course, the one thing I forgot to tell you to do is save. Also, you don't have to worry about, you know, saving everywhere you go. Like, if, you, if you're trying something out, it's best not to save there. Rosaries. Um, it's best not to save there uh, until you know you can survive there or you can get back from there. Because I've gotten stuck in places before where characters shouldn't be yet. And it's always ended very poorly. Alright, well actually let's go sell these strawberries. There's someone burning off some novice potions. Uh, you also get them as a reward for quests. Um, you can get novice potions, which is helpful in the beginning, but usually you get stuck with like a few thousand of them. Did the strawberry person leave? buying strawberries up here? Nope. Alright. Well, let's take you to the next leg of what you need to do in Ragnarok. Talk to this person, the Eden Group teleporter. Um, basically, your first thing to do, move to Eden Group, and this is going to be crazy when I get in. So. Yeah, there's a lot going on in here. These are all shops, people selling, like, Ooh, super uber stuff. Well, not him, but... Or him. But, yeah, I mean, some people are selling absolutely ridiculous stuff. Um, so, this is kind of the place where a lot of people put their really good stuff. But we don't care about their stuff. 
Um, if you're VIP, there's this guy, the guy who's ringing the bell, um, named Primo Debuffer, and he'll give you bonuses to your stats if you're a VIP. I'm buying black hair and glossy hair. Um, and then you have Mary Badger, which is if you do their turn in events, you can trade in their badges for, you know, battle manuals or reset stones and stuff like that. Uh, also, she'll teleport you to some places. Aperture. <laughs> she'll use her war portal skill and take you somewhere. Um, but we want to talk to this girl. Um, when you leave the training grounds, they tell you to talk to Lime Eleanor. So let's talk to her. People who follow their dreams, listen to me. We are representatives of the Garden of Eden, called the Eden Group. There is no place like this anywhere. Hello? Can I help you? I don't know why she's talking to herself. First thing you want to do is join Eden Group. I'm glad our novice outreach program has guided you here. Here are some helpful items to get you started on your journey. Oh. Well then. Hey, you didn't give me any damn scrolls. She said agility scrolls will help you move faster and blessing scrolls will make you stronger temporarily. The wings will let you select a city to travel to instantly and the battle manual will multiply the EXP for monsters and quests. If you like those, you can get more of them from the Kaffir gals upstairs or from buying from other players. Yeah, I thought she was giving them to you because I haven't done it in a while. But yeah, you can buy those in the cash shop. Uh, all the items she described. I thought she was giving to me for free. Oh. Well then. She did. People, if you're going to play this game, play it now. Because they're giving away awesome stuff. Yellow butterfly wings. Um, they're like regular butterfly wings. But they instantly take you to Prontera, Geffen, Payon, Maroc, or Aldebaran, or Alberta. So they take you to kind of the early cities to take on. Uh, which is... Is good if you get stuck. Don't use them all the time. They're like rare commodities. And apparently I have old battle manual. It gives me EXP rate to 150 for 30 minutes. That's pretty nice. But all those you just double click and you use them. Um, Blessing is a priest or an acolyte skill. And uh, it increases your strength, intelligence, and dexterity. Yeah, and then uh, and it does it for like a limited amount of time, and then you need to recast it. Agility scrolls uh, increase your agility, even though this is listed as an agile scroll in, or agile scroll instead of uh, AGI agility scroll. But. This item consumes 15 hit points and will be ineffective if the carrier is fewer than 15 hit points. Huh. Doesn't say anything with the blessing. Yeah, and they won't work when your character is casting a spell or anything. Well, that's kind of nice. Okay. So. I guess you have to talk to her again. So I guess she gives you free stuff the first time. Well, anyway, you say, yes, I want to join. Then you have to type your name. Leopard? Sh Did I? Yeah, I had an extra key. Chef her. I have to make sure I spell it right. All right. I don't know why you have to type your name and you think they just do it. Are you done? Let me see. Your name is Bo Leopard Shepherd Ba? No, that isn't right. She always screws up your name. And you have to type it in again. Welcome to Eden Group. And you get the Eden Group mark. This mark certifies you as a member of the Eden Group. It's made to be very portable. Weight, zero. Alright. So we joined Eden Group. Don't need to talk to her anymore. 
now the important thing is, is to talk to Instructor Boya. And what you say is, don't you have any... <clears throat> don't you have equipment? Uh, this is very important to do right from the start, because you're, you're going to have junky gear. That's just a rule. Uh, so, when you say it, she says, oh, I have a uniform set that's from my team, but I can't give it for free. Uh, we give it to great participants who do their best in the training. But she can't give it out due to emotion. So basically, you have to uh, do a training. So you say, participate in training. You can also refuse, but then you have to go all the way back. First step, conquer the desert. There's a desert city called Morocco. Go to the south gate, then east, and there's a small oasis in the center. If you go there, you can find a dog in the oasis. He is really mysterious, and he can and he can speak, so don't be surprised. Tell the dog, Boya is really great. That's important to remember. So, if so, he will give you a battle target. If you have any questions, ask that dog. Why are you staring at me? I had to come up with a password, right? What's wrong with that password? Anyway, that place is close to here. So, it is a reasonable place for your beginner like you. Okay? Bless you. Alright. And I think I, no matter what, I have to use money to use her, so... Uh... Actually, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. You can't use her unless you have VIP. Derp. Alright. Come on, let's walk. I know there's too many people in here and you get fussy. Okay. Now... There's two ways we can go about this. And the best way is because since we still have the free Kafra teleport service, we can go to Prontera. Now, you can't jump... Unless you're a VIP, you can't just jump straight to Maroc. So you kind of have to go... around. Yay, Prontera! Yeah, Prontera is the place to go if you want to buy anything, because these places are everywhere. You can spend like an hour just looking at every shop or buying and selling. All these are actually set up by people who have merchant characters, so yeah. I mean, you can find some pretty good treasures, and Rageal usually looks at this kind of stuff. Like, you can just look and search specifically for an item, um, but yeah. So, we have to talk to the coffer lady down here. And we have to use teleport service again. And this time we go to Morocco. This would cost a fair amount if it wasn't for free uh, transportation. So, now we're in Morocco. And I saved here, because I'm probably going to need it. I love the music here. Okay. I believe we need... Yeah, we need to go... to... here. So... We shall do that in the next episode of Let's Play Ragnarok with me, Marek Dice. See you later.